No longer will our students be seated in classrooms listening to lectures and the experiences of lecturers, but they will be actively involved in their own learning using evidence-based clinical interventions in the management of diseases and disabilities. A clinical simulation skills lab offers a unique way for students and healthcare providers to access and learn new technology in an environment that enables them to become familiar with the latest innovations. Nursing and facilitates wound care management, medication administration, NG2, gastric conditions. She has an interchangeable genitalia that can be for a male or a female that facilitates urological care and management conditions. She also has bowel reservoirs. So our students are familiar with gastric conditions and can care for the patient with any gastric condition. <laughs> Student nurse Bedford will be demonstrating to you basic nursing management of a patient with acute asthma, which will include medication administration, focused assessment, and communication skills. I'm Student nurse Tinette Bedford from the Clarence Pittsburgh Grant College, and I will be your nurse for today. Could you please tell me your name and date of birth? My name is Anne Brown and I'm born February 10th, 1970. Then, Mrs. Brown, could you please tell me how are you doing today? Yes, Anne. Bye, bye. I am feeling a little bit ill. It's hard for me to make sure that you are Okay, then, Mrs. Bond, I'll just elevate the bed, okay? Let me tell them if you feel uncomfortable. Okay, Mrs. Bond, I'll do a quick evaluation of your lungs. Could you please allow me to expose the area and I'll do some vital signs for you? obstetric simulator that provides the student with all the learning opportunities that they need to participate in the obstetric field. We do normal and advance the students to the more abnormal. The basic students have the opportunity to be introduced to the obstetric field using the high fidelity simulator. The more advanced midwifery students will also have the opportunity to manage complex cases 
that will present in the institution. Today, we will demonstrate an instructor-led learning process about the presentation and normal position that a fetus will present. For the faint of heart, it might be a little bit uncomfortable, but all this is normal. Participating in this learning session is student nurse Kyla Matthew. This is the position that the normal birthing mother will present in the critical area. I'm going to expose the side of the pregnant belly for you to see what will be available to you. See, mom is the sign for delivery drills. She's also designed for airway management. She is also designed for resuscitation, cardiac monitoring and hemodialysis, and then to the delivery in itself. Looking at the presentation, we speak to the position that the fetus lies in the uterus. The most common and safest is the cephalic presentation. And what this means is that the head of the fetus is in close alignment with the cervix. A second presentation is transverse or horizontal. And here, the shoulder is the closest body part in contact with the cervix. A common breech presentation is a buttock presentation, a buttock breech. And here is where the buttocks is in close position with the cervix. Now we want to talk about the positions that your, the fetus can present in. The position speaks to the direction in which the fetus lies. In this direction, where the head is used as the landmark and is pressed against the abdominal wall, this is called the occiput anterior position. The back of the head, the occiput is anterior and is lying towards the abdominal wall. Then we talk about the occiput posterior. The back of the head, the occiput, is against the spine. The most common and normal and safest is the occiput what presentation is the baby currently lying in? And what position is the baby currently lying in? On presentation during the delivery, in the occiput anterior, the fetus crowns and the head pushes forward and you see the back of the head first. The baby's head comes through the vaginal orifice. And this is why it's the occiput and tear. You see it first. They gradually turn, rotate, and deliver the shoulder. And then you have a normal delivery. But Sim Mom has the capabilities to deliver the baby herself. This is called the automatic delivery mode. We put the baby to sit in here, apply lubrication, place it inside the abdomen, and select for mom to deliver the baby on her, her own. We will use this tool to assess students to see how well they have grasped the concept of normal delivery, presentations, and positions. At this time, student nurse Herbert and Miss Martin, simulation technician, will demonstrate the capabilities of Sim Newbie. Sim Newbie is an interactive simulator designed with realistic traits and lifelike clinical features to enable learners to practice thus meeting training requirements.
requirements for pediatric and neonatal emergency and other resuscitation courses. This simulator allows occurrence of a variety of conditions ranging from a vigorous moving and crying baby to a cyanotic newborn. Realistic features include but are not limited to airway and breathing, breathing complications, electrocardiogram monitoring, vascular access, circulation which includes heart sounds and blood pressure measurement. Sim Newbie provides realistic, extensive, hands-on clinical experience which serve as a highly effective methodology for developing competency, confidence and hands-on entry into practice. Nurses would be best able to respond to neonatal and pediatric situations in nursing practice after being exposed to Sim Newby. We have student nurse Shanice Herbert and Kyla Matthew who would demonstrate some of the clinical features that Sim Newby presents. Newborns are assessed using APGAS scoring which gives the newborn a score of 0, 1 or 2. The scoring takes place 1 minute after birth, 5 minutes after birth and 10 minutes after birth if there are any problems. First, you assess the appearance using the color of the skin. Baby gets a 0 if he or she is pale or bluish gray all over. A 1 if he or she is pink centrally and bluish grayish on the extremities and a two if he or she is pink all over. Next, assess the, the pulse using the apical pulse. Baby gets a zero if no pulse is present, a one if pulse is present but below 100 beats per minute and a two if the pulse is present and over 100 beats per minute. I'll demonstrate. Listen by a set of score. To the apical pulse for one minute. Then you assess the irritability and reflex of the newborn. First, baby gets a zero if there is no response, a one if they are flexed legs and arms, and a two if there is crying, pulling away, or coughing. baby cries. Next, you assess the activity or the movement of the infant. Baby gets a zero if there are no response. A one if there is the flex. Or a two if there is active movement. And in the toes should spin out. Finally, you assess the respiration. Baby gets a zero if no respiration. Movement of the chest. Or a one if there's respiration but it's slow or irregular or there's a weak cry and a two if there's a good if there's good regular respiration or a good cry. It's our cardiac pulmonary uh, simulator. And this simulator allows us to care for the patient um, cardiac and pulmonary uh, care. And uh, Ms. Brooks will demonstrate his features. My name is Sue Edmonds Brooks. I'm from the class of Bryant Bryan College. Could you please tell me your name and date of birth, please? My name is John Brown, and I was born April 10, 1970. Okay, Mr. Brown, can you tell me how you're feeling? Not too bad today, just slight pain in my chest. When you say a slight pain in your chest, can you tell me exactly where the pain is located? And it's about a two right now. Yes, yes. Okay, Mr. Brown, I'm a, I'll start by doing some vitals and listening to your chest so I can get a clearer picture of what's going on. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, Mr. Brown, I'm going to listen to your chest now, okay? Okay.
take a deep breath for me in and out. Another one. How is the pain now, Mr. Brown? It's up to three? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to elevate the bed head and apply some oxygen, okay? It's gonna help you breathe. Okay. And I like for you to take some deep breaths, okay? Take some nice slow deep breaths for me, Mr. Brown. How was the pain? It's getting worse. You've gone to a six? Okay. Mr. Brown? Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, code blue, code blue. Can I get some help in here, please? Nurse Bedford, you could doc call his doctor and need the doctor for that. Our STEMI patient has gone unresponsive. There is no pulse, no BP, and no respiration. CPR is in progress.
Okay, Mr. Brown, the doctor is on his way, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. Inside the door is our control room. We can control our patients without being inside here with the students. So we allow them to have some autonomy on their actions based on what they've learned so far. This is called a leap pad. The kitty ones, <laughs> but that's the system and the software that we use to handle our patients, to make them normal, to make them very ill, to make the sounds for them. We can use the minister's voice and record it for our male patient, or we can use any female's voice and record it for our female patient. The scenarios that we use for our simulators are quite costly. We have pre-programmed scenarios that we must buy from the manufacturer for them. But we can also write our own programs. So we're moving into the era of health informatics, nursing technology, integrating science and nursing care to make it a wonderful learning experience. Higher learning for students, more competent nursing students, more competent nurses, and a better healthcare system for St. Christine. Setting the standard for the OECS and the Caribbean at large. The students are able to monitor patients in the state, so the lecturer does not have to be present with them. We stay inside the control room and we can say, okay, we're going to deliver the baby now. And they must be ready. We have to monitor the stages of delivery, what's the next action, and we're very excited about her because she can do so many things. Not just being a mom, but being a normal female patient. We can use her in the antenatal delivery mode and the post care after delivery. Okay, we'll see you soon, mom.